Hi, I'm Chris Montero here at the EMS 10 2011 Awards, and I'm joined by Pat Songer from Humboldt County or Humboldt General Hospital. When am I going to When am I going to You have a long name. We do. Right. Uh, so I'm so glad that I have a friend that is well, thank you. an EMS 10 award, a fellow EMS 10 awardee. Thank so you. tell me a little bit about why you were nominated for the award. You know, I, I'm still trying to get my hands around that. I, I think it's because uh, I have a great team, um, you know, and I really believe my, that my people or my guys should be here um, instead of myself. They're the ones that uh, this award should really go to. Um, I, I'm, just, I'm just kind of pushing them in the right directions. And uh, I think it's just a collaboration of what we've done over the last seven years to, to bring a small rural service to a, a level of excellence. So tell me, tell me a little bit about your background then. Where did you come from before you came, before you went to Winnemucca? And then uh, tell me a little bit about the innovations in patient care as far as, I know you guys are using ultrasounds, things like that. So a little bit about your background sure. first. Well, my background's basically always been in rural EMS, you know, from a small town in uh, Montana to a, a small town in, in uh, Idaho. Um, always kind of working with uh, small rural communities, um, an owner of an ambulance service at one time. Um, uh, kind of just jumped in feet first when I started my EMS career and, and uh, road of hard knocks, I guess you could say, learning. Um, and then uh, lived a little bit, uh, a year in Durango with uh, flight service there, uh, you know, still rural EMS, um, and, and really believe that uh, in rural communities in America, we should be able to have good positive outcomes just like in the large cities. Uh, we just have to surround ourselves with good people and, and uh, focus on good patient care for the communities. So that was, a, I was gonna actually ask you, how big is your area that you serve? We uh, respond to about just over 10,000 square miles. Um, so obviously our, our population area is, is, is dense in one area and, and very rural in er other areas, which has some very challenging, unique um, ways to respond. You know, code three, 130 miles is a, is a long response for us, but it's what we do a couple you times a, a month. Book in that we month. could, <laughs> and some of them do. <laughs> so uh, you guys also do some pretty, uh, pretty cool other things. Um, we'll talk about patient care in a minute, but let's talk about Burning Man. You guys yeah. now have the contract to, to cover that. We How do. was your experience with that this past year? It's been great. Uh, you know, we're a small hospital and we, we try to step outside the box and, and push the limits of things, um, but we're very community-based. Uh, we, we're uh, very team family orientated, and I believe that's the values that uh, some organizations look for, and, and I think that was one of the ones that uh, Burning, the Burning Man organization was looking for. Um, plus, being a hospital-based ambulance service, we bring some of that uh, value to their organization. Uh, the Burning Man is a, a mass gathering event you know, of, of about 50,000 people, and so they require clinical services and ambulance services, and, and I think that uh, when they were looking to uh, renew their contract, they were looking for a uh, provider that would bring in, you know, that community value-based service. And Burning Man, they stand up 50,000, a city of 50,000 people in the middle of the desert for... For seven days. For seven days. Yeah. That's amazing. So let's talk about patient care. You, I assume you guys have 12 leads and things like that, but what are some of the new things you guys are doing as far as ultrasound? Well, we're doing ultrasound in the field. Uh, I think we try to do some innovative things, you know, ultrasound in the field, iStats, you know, portable labs in the field, but uh, I believe that uh, what we do in the field, we try to um, since we we have to figure out ways to shorten system times in rural areas to get uh, patients to definitive care. Our, our nearest trauma center, our nearest cardiac center is 165 miles uh, to the west in Reno, Nevada. So um, there's things you have to do, I believe, to shorten system times. But not only shorten system times, I think you need to do things that reflects upon making sure your the health and wellness of your community financially and the outcomes are, you know, balanced very well. So ultrasound, for example, gives us the ability to do rule outs in the field instead of having, you know, a $30,000 helicopter bill for a rule out on a possible, you know, uh, abdo you know acute abdomen or abdominal injury um, is important. Right. And instead of just flying because it meets trauma criteria, you know, now we our paramedics can rule out and or rule in. Maybe we can uh, have the local surgeon take care of uh, issues instead of having to go to a trauma surgeon because it's a it's a localized injury and, and uh, with portable ultrasound those things can be done now with the technology we have nowadays. So what are you guys doing with the iStat? Are you guys doing troponins? Or? Uh, troponins and lights mostly right. in the field so um, uh, 
helping with our 12-week program, also shorten system time so we can uh, make decisions on whether to launch aircraft or just go directly to Reno and bypass or do, you know, our goal is, and I think we'll have it by the summer, is thrombolytics in the field. And, and that's kind of the, the goal we're, we're striving to is 12 lead and, and doing troponins and all that so we can reach that level. Very nice. So you've done that and you're, you're, you've really built a great EMS system there. And now you're getting ready to do something that's near and dear to my heart, which is community paramedic. We are. And uh, so tell me a little bit about where you guys are going with that, or, or what you see as your population that you're going to serve with that. Well, I, I think uh, I think we can serve, a, especially in the rural area, I think we can serve a community's health and wellness in a way that's that's really outside the box. I, th I believe that, uh, especially our community, we're a mining community. Um, some of our lifestyles aren't the best, uh, and I think we can increase patient outcomes, but I think we can also do things to keep people out of the hospital. Our CEO is is behind us 100% on seeing what we can do with some initiatives to take to keep people outside the hospital. Um, you know, we're a small service, so reducing our transport volume probably isn't as critical as some of the larger services, but we can do things that can re reduce uh, the amount of patients that come through our ER for non-acute or sub-acute um, issues and also increase the health and wellness of our community by doing wellness programs and things like that. We've actually been trying to do this for about three years and thanks to you we've kind of moved this forward uh, very rapidly um, and I think now we kind of have a focus on where we want to go. And what to me is kind of cool about that is you have a hospital CEO that says Yes. We don't want a lot. We're trying to reduce patients coming in the hospital. You'd think right. that's almost counterintuitive, but it's a double-edged sword it is. right now. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, is. and I, right. I think as healthcare reform takes traction and, and things change, that that'll be a different story. And and he knows that he sees the future of healthcare reform. So, I believe he's looking at the future. Um, but it is also counterproductive for a community to keep doing things the way we've always done them, just because we have to have numbers to pay for facilities. <laughs> that's. Kind of enlightened actually yes. a little bit so tell me a little bit about your ideas or how you feel you're going to be progressing in the into the future with with your service where you know hey you're at the top of the game now where, where are you going basically? where do we go from yeah, now right, uh, right yeah you know i think community paramedicine is truly the next big step but i also believe that we need to continually focus on what we do to reduce system times to do, mm. produce positive patient outcomes, you know, thrombolytics in the field, oh, nice. um, working to move the hospital now to a level four trauma center, wow. doing little things to, to create um, continuity of care from the, from the field through the ER to the next high, higher level of care. You know, I believe community paramedicine ties into all that. You know, this, this all ties together. I think some of the things that we can produce as community paramedics will also produce positive patient outcomes in the uh, safety aspect of what we do to respond to the safety um, type issues that we have out there. Um, and I think that'll all tie together. I think that if we make our community, uh, the wellness of our community better, um, I don't believe our call volume will go down. It'll be, just be shifted to a different direction and where our call volume will probably actually go up, but I believe the financial stability of our healthcare system in a local small rural community will increase. And what really is neat about that is we were, I was talking to somebody today and they said, you know, think about not only the impact of your healthcare system, but think about the impact that you have that's kind of this ripple effect outside Absolutely. of the, you know, you're taking care of people now that aren't having missed sick days and they, you know, they don't have childcare issues. And now, I mean, the ripple effect in, in the economy is it's enormous. It's huge. Absolutely. So EMS 10. How do you feel about this award? I mean, you, you received it. What are your feelings about the, the future of something like this in our industry for us? Uh, it's very humbling for me, uh, especially from a very small uh, community and, and some of the other recipients I see. I, you know, I wonder why I sit here, <laughs> but uh, it's very humbling and uh, very grateful. But you know, I, I've, I've got to get give the the uh, congratulations to my team. Uh, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be here if we didn't uh, if they didn't believe in me and right. I didn't believe in them and. Uh, I believe that they've brought the organization to where, where it is now. You know, I've kind of steered the ship a little bit, but uh, they've really got here through their hard work. Well, thank you, Pat. Thanks thank for you. joining us. And I'm Chris Monterra for the EMS 10 2011 winner and winners, Pat Songer and others. Thank you.